So a while ago, having finished The Wire and then breaking Bad and Better Call Saul, I ran a poll on my channel where I asked my subscribers what series they'd like me to watch and make videos on next. Fargo and Mad Men both came out on top in terms of votes and I decided to go for Fargo. Now that I've finished that, I've decided to go with the prison drama Oz next, for various reasons. Though it came third in the poll, Oz seems to get the most amount of lip service from my subscribers when talking about other shows. People are constantly telling me to check it out, so I was curious, because it's got an interesting reputation. On one hand, you hardly ever hear about it when people discuss the best shows around, and yet it is still held in high esteem as one of the great innovators of modern television and the first long-running HBO one-hour episode series. Though the likes of The Sopranos is touted as the series which started the new golden age of television, which gave us shows like The Wire and Deadwood, those well-versed in television history inform us that Oz walked so that The Sopranos could run. And I'm excited, because it's all new and fresh for me. I don't actually know anything about Oz except one major spoiler, and that the show is supposed to decline in quality with the last two seasons. Oz is praised for a great many reasons. For a TV show, especially one that aired first in 1997, it is highly realistic in its depiction of prison life. I've seen loads of crime films and prison movies, and even still, more than 20 years later, the first season of Oz really leaves an impact with just how profane it is. The language, the violence depicted, the disregard for human life by inmates and guards alike. I can only imagine how shocking it must have been back in the 90s, and the boundaries it pushed allowed other shows to pioneer and perfect the craft. And for how preliminary Oz is in terms of HBO success, it doesn't at all feel like a show that's gingerly dipping its toes into the water in the first season. Rather, it throws you, much like some of the newer inmates like Beecher, straight into the gruelling world of Oswald, the prison where the show is set. There's a few shots outside the prison and whatnot during scenes of protests and stuff, but for the most part, the entire show is set inside the complex. It's one of the many things that gives this show a really claustrophobic, aggressive, oppressive feel. It feels like anything can happen at any moment. Out of the blue, a major Kara might get shanked and killed. A fight might break out between inmates over the smallest thing. It's like any second something is going to happen. You need to be alert. You need to be looking over your shoulder. It really does capture that prison vibe well. I've never been myself, thankfully, but know people who've been inside and have seen enough videos from ex-cons to know that constant vigilance is required inside. That there is often a strangulating atmosphere inside prison, and Oz really does feel like that. There's something in the air, and it ain't love, as one character says. Everybody's depressed in the show, everyone's gloomy and down, even the guards. As one of the many things explored is the fact that the guards are not paid a lot, hence why they get involved in contraband smuggling. The characters who aren't so down tend to be the more psychotic ones who feel at home in a world as oppressive as Oz. You feel dirty after watching it, like you need a quick shower. With that being said, like many of the heavier HBO shows, it is still very funny, especially when you take it out of context. One of the complaints of the show is that it feels dated. It's true that it utilizes video and sound effects that a high school student might be able to achieve today, and you wouldn't get in a modern prestige television show, like a baby moaning sound effect and playing around with the colour hue when a character is dizzy or something. But it works, it works for Oz, and it's partly because Oz embraces an element of wackiness and surrealism. It's grim and depressing, but simultaneously it's bombastic and wild, both in content and in presentation. It's so fast-paced, you hardly get a chance to breathe and contemplate on what you're watching before Oz rushes to its next set of characters. It jumps from character to character, subplot to subplot, the camera whizzes around getting up close and personal in its duty as a fly on the wall. It's like there's a hyperactive cameraman running around the prison desperately trying to capture as much footage as he can. 
There's a lot of characters in the show, a lot of inmates, and then there's the warden, the guards, the medical staff, and the show helps you out. It's one of the few shows or movies where I appreciate the flashbacks and don't consider them to be insulting to the audience, because without them it can be difficult to keep up. We're also helped and provided levity from the brutality by some sequences where one of the inmates in a wheelchair breaks the fourth wall and addresses us directly in these sometimes surreal segments, posing philosophical questions and prison talk. There's a lot of different factions, the Muslims, the Aryan Brotherhood, the Latinos, the wise guys and whatnot, and encompassing of the dismissive attitude Oz seems to have towards you as a surrogate for the new inmate, it doesn't really bother to explain them much to you. It feels like this world has started breathing and living long before you entered Oz, and the dynamics between the different factions and the complex relationships between different characters is interesting to explore and to dive deeper into. There's a lot that happens in season 1. The basis for the show is an experimental wing of Oswald called Emerald City, presided over by the idealistic Tim McMahon, who finds himself frustrated in his efforts to transform the lives of his inmates through reformative education. There's a lawyer, Beecher, who commits manslaughter, a new inmate, whose life spirals endlessly into chaos and despair, becoming a bitch, constantly abused, his wife leaves him, he starts taking drugs, and you can see the frustration building and bubbling in this guy, with cathartic and explosive conclusions. There is a political prisoner, Saeed, a Muslim who strengthens the mental fortitude and vigour of his followers in prison, becoming a threat to the powers that be in the process. An Italian mobster controls the supply and distribution of drugs, whose position is jealously courted by an Irishman and Adebisi, a Nigerian who is something of a wild card. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. You know, it's funny that some shows generate a lot of controversy with the things they depict and the way they can possibly influence viewers, especially youngsters. But Oz is such a show that you watch it and it makes you think, I never want to go to prison. You'll think twice before you nick a pencil from your workplace. The acting is okay. I've not noticed anything particularly amazing yet, though many of the guys here in small roles would eventually improve and land major roles in subsequent HBO shows. Although... On that point about the acting, there is actually some really good low-key writing and acting. Like, for example, just from the way he carries himself, you know Adebisi is a lifer before they even tell us he is. I wonder, and I'm just thinking out loud here, but I wonder if there's an ironic element where some of the techniques that would have been considered innovative, like all the video effects, are now considered dated, and elements that would have quickly felt campy and dated at the time, like a prisoner taking a shit on another inmate and rubbing it all over his face, actually appears more realistic now than it initially did, now that we live in an age of social media where ex-cons have been able to tell stories of what heinous things occurs behind bars. If I have to pick something that I do find dated, it's probably some of the more philosophical poised scenes and pieces of dialogue. The narration from the wheelchair-bound Augustus, for example, sometimes funny, sometimes poignant, is also sometimes pompous and a bit too flowery. The third episode talks a lot about God and faith, for example, and some of the dialogue maybe sounded boundary-pushing at the time, but it comes off like it was written by an edgy teenager now. But all in all, it's a show I will definitely continue watching, and I look forward to seeing what comes next. Thanks for watching.